Welcome to Brookside Smidwick. It's lovely to have you join with us once more. Just a few quick announcements. After the teaching tonight at half past eight, there will be a Zoom prayer time. So anyone who hasn't got the wee link for that, contact me straight after this and email me and I'll send it straight back out to you. It'd be lovely to have more joining us tonight in prayer. Just to say that this will be the last one of these teaching midweeks, midweeks going out in this form. From next Wednesday on and for July and August, there will be Zoom midweeks. And so folk will be coming. There'll be a short devotion by myself or one of the elders and a prayer time then. It's so important that you, we keep praying. So I encourage you each Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Remind you on Sunday night of our drive-in service. All be welcome to that at 7 p.m. in the field beside the manse. Uh, prayer point later on, we have the weather to have the silage cut on good weather on Sunday night. Uh, so it's important prayer point in that. Also, just to say something I forgot to announce last Sunday, any women in Brookside Church who would like to be part of the Brookside PW's WhatsApp group, little devotional encouraging messages are sent out via WhatsApp every uh, or occasionally uh, and if you'd like to be a part of that please speak to Mark or Turtle or one of the women on the PW committee or even if you send a text to me my mobile number is on the, the website send a text to me and uh, we'll get you linked up for that we're going to continue tonight our studies in first John we're first John chapter 4 tonight verses 1 to 6 and so looking at the subject Test the spirits. But let's commit our time to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the great and wonderful God that you are. We praise you that you're a God who is perfect in all of your ways. A God whose perfection knows no limits because there's no limit to the God you are. We, we just can't grasp how you are infinite, beyond measure. We think of how, Father, vast this universe is, and it is really nothing compared to the size of our God. We just praise you for the God, how you are, and that you make yourself known to us. You make us yourself known, Father, in the past through your the prophets and appearing to people in different ways. But, Father, we think of how the writer of Hebrews says in these last days, you have particularly revealed yourself through Jesus, your Son. And we thank you through the ministry and work of your Holy Spirit. Jesus becomes real to us, even living in our lives and our hearts. And we just pray for that ministry of the Spirit even tonight as we look at this wonderful little passage in 1 John 4. That you would guide and teach us from your word. Father, we pray you would forgive us our many sins. Forgive us for how we don't love you of all our heart, soul, mind and strength. Forgive us for we don't love our neighbour as ourselves. May we grow in love for you and our neighbour even through this study tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's read those six verses from 1 John 4 and beginning at verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth. And the spirit of error. Amen. So test the spirits is what we're called to do in this passage tonight. In this world we will hear many different voices. Uh, particularly in the modern world of social media we can get so much communication coming our way and these voices often say very different and contradictory things 
And the challenge for us all is to know what voice to listen to. And here in this passage tonight, John gives us some wonderful help. The first thing he teaches us is don't be taken in. John was the apostle who was full of love. But here he calls for a, a bit of steel from among the believers. He is clear that many false prophets have gone out into this world. And often these prophets have gone out from the church. So many false prophets have originated among God's people. In chapter 2 and verse 19 he speaks of those who have gone out from among them. And he's probably thinking of some of them even now as he speaks of these false prophets. You remember how Paul also warned the elders in Ephesus of false prophets who would come in among them like wolves? And we're told that often they're wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. They would be hard to distinguish from true prophets. And generally what you find is that they'll teach the truth. And then gradually just one wee thing maybe not right. And then gradually that which is false becomes bigger and bigger on their agenda and takes over. All prophets we are shown here are led by a spirit. True prophets are led by the Holy Spirit. False prophets are led by evil spirits, fallen angels, demons. And we must remember that there is a real spiritual battle going on all around us. We're in the middle of a real spiritual war. And this in many ways is a, a battle for our minds. And so we have truth and falsehood battling against each other for the minds of people. So as we think of these false prophets, as we think of these evil spirits and the need to test it, some people might say, well, William, that's very negative. And some people might even quote Matthew 7 and verse 1 where Jesus says, Judge not and you be not judged. I accept that verse. But those who quote that verse rarely quote what Jesus says just a few verses later. In verses 15 and 16 of the same chapter, Matthew 7. There he says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. So when Jesus says, judge not to be in a judge, he's against this very condemnatory attitude. Always going around criticizing, always going around fault, finding fault. And we shouldn't be like that. Uh, we have been looking recently in, in Romans 14 and 15. And speaks about love and grace among God's people and thinking, caring for others. And so we shouldn't go around with an attitude that criticises all the time and trips people up. And we shouldn't always be going around judging. But we do need to be discerning. We must accept there is indeed truth and falsehood. We must accept there are genuine teachers and there are false teachers in this world. And we have to be wise. Jesus tells us to watch out and to find out who they are from their fruits, from the evidence that is in their lives. So we're not just going away to condemn everyone in that sense. We're not to be wanting to always put others down. But we have to be wise. We have to be discerning. And it's never a loving thing to accept falsehood. So, don't be taken in. Be aware there's a spiritual battle. Be aware there are false prophets led by evil spirits around us. We have to be careful. We're not to be gullible at all in this. But secondly then, the test of Jesus in verses 2 to 3. Now, let me just read those verses. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which he heard was coming and now is in the world already. True prophets will believe and teach the truth about Jesus. And there are Three things the true prophets will teach about Jesus. 
First of all, they'll teach that he is the eternal Son of God. As the Catechism says, the same in substance, equal in power and glory, with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. That Jesus is the Word who in the beginning was with God and was God, John 1. He is the Eternal One. He is the Eternal Son of God. Secondly, true prophets will teach that Jesus is the Christ, the promised Messiah. The one who would come to save his people from their sin. The suffering servant of Isaiah 53. The one who would take on the sin and the, the griefs of his people. Who, will bear, who would bear that upon himself on the cross. So, they believe he's the eternal son of God. They believe that he is the Christ. The one who's come to be the saviour of the world. And thirdly, true prophets will teach that Jesus has come in the flesh. He truly took on human nature, human body, human mind, and human soul. They will teach that Jesus was fully God, as much God as the Father is, and the Spirit. They'll teach Jesus fully man, as much human as you and I, the one difference being that he is without sin. So the three things, eternal Son of God, the Christ, the Saviour, he is common flesh, taken on human nature. And it's not surprising that the, the focus of this test is on Jesus. Because the focus of the Holy Spirit's work is to draw people to glorify Christ. Jesus said that in John 16, the upper room, verse 13 and 14, that the Spirit would glorify him. The Spirit would draw attention to Jesus. The Spirit directs people to Jesus. And so the, the test of a true and false prophet, it's not surprising then it's about Jesus because that's primarily the work of the Holy Spirit. But it's also not surprising because it's the, the desire of evil spirits to draw people away from Jesus by obscuring, by twisting the truth about who he is and what he has done. And indeed, down through the centuries, the vast majority of the heresies that have come of generally to do with Jesus, with who he is or what he has done. And so the devil hates that, hates the truth about Jesus. But the Holy Spirit delights in that truth. And it just reminds us that Christianity is all about Jesus. It's about knowing Jesus, loving Jesus, trusting Jesus, worshipping Jesus, following Jesus, having Jesus in our lives, a friendship with Jesus, a relationship with Jesus. It's all about Jesus. That's what the devil hates and will attack. So, don't be taken in. And then the test of Jesus. And then thirdly, we have the being victorious in verses 4 to 6. And let me read these verses. Little children, you're from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Being victorious. False teaching, we're told in verse 4, is overcome by he who lives within the believer. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And he who is in the believer is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the, the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. The Spirit who's unlimited in power, goodness, knowledge and wisdom. He is the one who gives victory to the believer in the midst of false teaching, false prophets and a world that is hostile to Jesus. Greater is he who is in you, the Spirit of God, than he who is in the world, the devil and all his forces. Oh, I, I never could read that verse without thinking of the time I was at university. And uh, Thursday night would be a night when the Queen's Christian Union would go and do outreach in the Students' Union. And Stromilla's Christian Union would go and do outreach down in Stromilla's. And we used to meet together in a week cafe to pray together before we went out 
And the number of times that that verse was quoted, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And the reason why it was kept quoted is we couldn't face this spiritual battle. We couldn't face this conflict. We couldn't dare go speak to others about Jesus if we didn't rely on the Holy Spirit who is living in us. We are aware that there is an enemy who wanted to harm us and trip us up. But we are aware of a friend living within who is so much greater. The spirit who is unlimited in power, goodness, knowledge, wisdom and so on. In John 16, in the upper room, Jesus at the end of that chapter says, I have overcome the world. Jesus overcomes the world. Jesus wins the victory for his people. And the Holy Spirit, what he does is to apply to our souls the benefits and the reality of the victory which Jesus has secured for his people. We will only know the victory in Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And we must be so aware of that. We must rely on Jesus. We must pray for that grace. We think of communion, we take the bread and the wine. We, it speaks of a spiritual feeding on the crucified Christ. And that's how we live the Christian life. That's how we can be victorious in the Christian life. It's not by doing our best and just rolling up our sleeves and trying harder. It's coming to Jesus, knowing his power, his reality within us. True and false teaching divides between those who belong to the world and those who belong to Christ. Look at verses 5 and 6 again. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And so teaching, true and false teaching, both cause a division between those who are from God and those who are from the world. People are born with an anti-God and pro-world bias and they'll never accept the truth about God, about Jesus, about salvation because of the control of sin upon their lives. It's only the intervention of God's Spirit enlightening their minds, changing their hearts that will bring them to know and to trust in Jesus as they embrace the gospel that is indeed shared in the scriptures. In 1 Corinthians 2, Paul is speaking about this and he says a natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for they are folly or foolishness to him. And he's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. And so Paul is saying there, the natural person, the person without the Holy Spirit in their life, they will never accept the things of God, the truth of the gospel. And he says the spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And what Paul is saying there is that a Christian is a, is a new creature. He's a, a new person. He has been transformed. He's a new creation. The mind of Christ has entered him. He has been changed inside in his thinking. He is, his eyes have been opened. His heart has been transformed so that he will know the truth, accept the truth, embrace the truth. And through that, he will know the victory of Christ. But the person without the spirit within, without the power of salvation, will live in darkness, will live in their sin, will die in darkness, die in their sin, not accepting the truth which has been taught to them. May God give you the grace to embrace Christ and to find in Christ the victory over false teaching, over the world, over the devil. Don't be taken in the test of Jesus, being victorious in Jesus. That's what we need to hold on to. 
I'll lead in prayer and just to mention in regards to prayer that we will particularly remember the, the Williamson and Ray families after the death of, of Jennifer uh, this past weekend and remembering her daughter Karen and sons Gareth and Mervyn, uh, remembering her brothers and sisters and the whole family circle at this sad time. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for what we've learned again tonight and help us, Father, to test all things, to test the spirits, to be aware that there's that which is true and there's that which is false. And we pray by your love and by your grace, O God, in your tender mercies, you'll be drawing people to Christ and, and Father, drawing us closer into Christ day by day. We thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit and how he opens up your truth and opens up your heart, our hearts, O oh God, to the truth. And we just pray that we would indeed be wise, not be taken in by the, the foolishness, the falsehood of the world around us. Father, we would just pray at this time for those who mourn. We pray you'd be very close, Father, to the Williamson family, to Karen and, and Gareth and to Mervyn. And think too of, at this time, of Jennifer's two grandchildren. Think of her brothers and sisters. Father, we just pray for these folk, that they would know your love and compassion in a very real way. And Father, we just pray too at this time for, I just think of her driving and on a Sunday night, God willing. You know we need a bit of good weather for the silage. You know, Father, we need good weather on Sunday night if this is going to bear fruit, Father. So we look to you. We believe that you're a God who controls everything, even the weather. We pray as your will, you give us really good weather. Undertaker God, we pray. And we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. I encourage you uh, to join us in the Zoom prayer meeting at half eight. And if you're not able to do that, then uh, continue to pray for the needs of our church community, our country and our world at this time. God bless.